Howdy there, folks. Mark here. Just going to show a few of the uh, action figures from the 60s. Uh, a lot of you people probably younger and don't remember a lot of the 1960s action figures. But uh, G.I. Joe kicked it off in 1964 with uh, a 12-inch figure. Uh, Marx was right behind them, if not right at the same time, creating their line of action figures. And one of the first action figures Mark create, Mark's toys created was the Johnny West cowboy action figure. Now, these things were made out of polyplastic, the bodies, the heads, the hands, and a lot of the accessories were made out of uh, rubber um, and dark, uh, a hard plastic. Um, so what I've got here to show you guys is like uh, the Johnny West figure. And this is the first edition Johnny West box. The first box that Marks came out with was Action Box. Notice it says Johnny West Action Cowboy. That was the first, the first run. This Johnny West, however, is a second edition Johnny West. The original Johnny West uh, figure didn't have the uh, connectors that went through the arms. They were actually just a loop built into the plastic on the polyplastic. They didn't have those. Uh, if you see on this Chief Cherokee, he's a first issue Chief Cherokee. Notice he, his arms don't have those rivets in them to connect the spring. They actually depend on the plastic. Uh, and Chief Cherokee's hands are more open, which is a first edition hand. The Johnny West hands and the second edition hands were closed, a little more closed. Now, these, this particular color of polyplastic is extremely fragile. And you'll notice that 90% of the Johnny West figures and the Chief Cherokee figures and any of these that are this caramel color polyplastic uh, if you look on eBay, you'll notice that a lot of them are broken into little pieces uh, because it disintegrates. It literally just cracks up and disintegrates. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't really put it back together. You can glue it. It might stay in position. It might be just like a statue. But uh, you have to have all the parts. But they do just fall apart. I tried to fix one yesterday, and it just fell apart. So I tossed it. I kept the head in the hands. Now, this Chief Cherokee, almost pulled him by the leg. I would hate to see him fall apart. Very hard to find. This is the first Chief Cherokee box, which you notice it says Action Indian. And uh, that was the 2063 box. That's the part number I assume. And then the second version of the Chief Cherokee box. Notice it says Movable Indian. So that's the second version. So here we have a Chief Cherokee with the first edition, Chief Cherokee with a first edition box. Then we have Johnny West with the first edition box. This is the second edition Johnny West. And this Action Cowboy. Got gear for the range, bags of gold, spurs. This guy doesn't have his spurs. It's hard to find the spurs. You can bend him in a thousand and one positions. They later changed it to a hundred and one positions. Comes with a rifle, a pistol, pistol belt, derringer, knife, full set of Western gear. And this is uh, Johnny West was a pretty cool cowboy. They gave him. Uh, they made some uh, partners for Johnny. They gave him a lady that uh, his wife, we assume. Her name is Jane West. Now this Jane West is a second edition Jane West. She's got rivets in the arms and she has a different head sculpt. This is the second head sculpt. Uh, they gave her more of a feminine look. The first head sculpt people were, I guess some people were complaining that she looked a little too masculine. Uh, I've got one of those coming in pretty soon. But that's her box. That's a first edition box. Um, Says you can bend her in a thousand and one positions too. Oh, Jane. 
Jane West, the movable cowgirl. So, then we'll go along to another character that they made that was really cool. And this guy's name was Mike Hazard, double agent. This was right after the James Bond got famous and Man From U.N.C.L.E. got famous. Uh, Marks came up with their own spy, and his name was Mike Hazard, double agent. And this is a, that's a first issue, Mike Hazard, double agent box. And it came from, uh, I think it uh, got a little sticker on there where it originally came from. Originally, it sold for $3 at Kresge's, $3 and some odd change. That was quite a bit of money in the 60s for kids to have, have to earn it and not steal it out of mama's purse. My mother got me uh, one of these figures back in uh, around 64, 65 maybe. Um, and she also got me a Captain Action Superman outfit. And the way the Superman outfit was displayed in the box, it almost looked like there was an actual figure in there when uh, it wasn't. It was just a bust with a mask on it uh, and a chest piece. Um, and so she thought I could use this guy as a bad guy and then have Superman be the good guy. This guy in the corner here, that's a Chief Cherokee head second edition hands on a Geronimo uh, body, which is, uh, it's been, looks like it's stained or dyed to be a little darker. So that, and that's a Chief Cherokee. His, uh, he was, the, the body was from um, a Geronimo and they used white plastic for Geronimo. And you will see a lot of Geronimos available. Let me, uh, let me pull one of those up. And here's the uh, Geronimo figure. Now, a lot of people think that the uh, the outfits were identical that Chief Cherokee and Geronimo wore, that they used the same mold for the polyplastic figures. Um, they actually didn't. They used uh, Chief Cherokee has a different outfit than than Geronimo and. One way of telling whether you've got a Geronimo body or a Chief Cherokee body is by looking at the, uh, the pants section. If you notice the, the front of the, the Geronimo looks like this. And the Chief Cherokee figure looks like this. Different fringe, the fringe on the very bottom sticks out on the Chief Cherokee. Uh, whereas on the Geronimo, it doesn't hang down the same. Chief Cherokee's arms and fringe. Looks like they used maybe the same arms, but they definitely used a different main torso. The main torso they used was different uh, between Geronimo and and our buddy Chief Cherokee. Um, like I'm saying, this caramel color plastic is very, very, very fragile. You can see right there how it's cracking up and it will just fall apart. The limbs just break into pieces. So if you have one of these, take care to take care of it because uh, they're getting more and more rare. So that's some of the best of the West figures. Now this is just another Mike Hazard box uh, that's not in as good condition, but still it's got a great figure in it and some accessories. I think I listed that on eBay a couple of times. And now that was Mark's best of the West. They also did a, a military figure uh, to compete with G.I. Joe, or actually to pal around and be G.I. Joe's buddy. I'll show you one, a couple of those here in just a second. So, folks, this is the G.I. Joe from Hasbro. This guy uh, was put out in 1964 by Hasbro, and they made several changes to the G.I. Joe body uh, during the early years. Uh, the first edition, the earliest uh, G.I. Joe, had things called baby feet and fat hands. This Joe shows an example of the baby feet, and you can compare it with 
the later version feet. Now somebody said that the, the bigger feet were actually first, then they came out with the little feet for a while, and then they went back to the big feet. But I have yet to really see that. I think they actually came out with the baby feet and the fat hands. Now, uh, this was, a, this was a, a TM version. It was uh, patent pending. This one was too. And then this G.I. Joe soldier, I think might have been a patented figure. Their hands changed. And if you notice, um, I'll show you. Let me finish up here with this. G.I. Joe uh, licensed a toy company in England in 65 called Palatoy. Uh, they gave them license to create an action figure for boys and girls in England. And Action Man is who they came up with. And that's an Action Man from England. He's made by Palatoy. He's basically a G.I. Joe, and he's a first issue body. Uh, this is what they call the fat hand. And the fingers are fatter. The thumb is fatter. If you compare it with this hand from G.I. Joe, you can actually you can actually see the difference. The G.I. Joe fingers are longer, more pointed, and I think it was probably made so that they could be uh, removed from the mold easier. Um, but the first issue hands are the ones that they continue to use on the Action Man figure and the baby feet. That's on Action Man. He came out in 65. Now, Mark's Toy Company produced a figure to compete with G.I. Joe, and they called him the All-American Fighter and or Buddy Charlie. They did do a polyplastic army man called Stoney Smith, and originally he had stiff straight legs. The second version, they gave him knees so he could bend, and he was built just like the Johnny West and the, the Mike Hazard figures. Uh, but Marx introduced Buddy Charlie, and he was a posable action figure made out pretty much like Joe. If you notice, the hands were more natural looking uh, than the G.I. Joe figure. Uh, Buddy had a very skinny body, and G.I. Joe, where you see he's got ankles that, that will, will go left and right, uh, these guys didn't have the... Uh, the ankles that would turn left and right. They would go up and down, but they wouldn't turn left and right. Uh, these figures, uh, they all had the same body, same hairstyle. They were always painted with the brown hair and brown eyes. Um, they gave a company, Marks in Canada, permission to, 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 to build a Buddy Charlie too, and they called him the All-Canadian Fighter. And it was a Buddy Charlie body with more of a Canadian outfit. And they might have highlighted the eyes a little bit, painted the whites of the eyes. We noticed that Marks uh, didn't really highlight the, the white part of the eyes. He just did the little brown pupil areas, irises and pupils. They had a dog tag like G.I. Joe, uh, and it said Marks All-American Fighter on it by Marks. And these guys, one of the issues that they have is when you find them, uh, most of the time you're going to find them with not wearing the original boots. The original boots just didn't held up. They were like the polyplastic bodies. They would just crack up and deteriorate. And that started basically 15 years or so after the body was produced. So if you got one in 65, by 1980, the boots would have been just deteriorating. Every once in a while, you'll see one for sale, and they still got a part of the original boot on their foot. Uh, but G.I. Joe boots were always used for, the Hasbro boots were used a lot for people who were just trying to put something on the feet of their buddy Charlies. Uh, they came with this, this was a Marine, this was your soldier, your Army man, and then they also had a pilot and a sailor, and like G.I. Joe did the same, G.I. Joe had a pilot and, and uh, a Marine and a soldier and a sailor. Um, at one time, I had all four of these services and also had a thing called Eisenhower, General of the Army, and that was put out by Montgomery Wards. These guys sold a lot at Montgomery Wards and other toy stores, but I remember, uh, seems like seeing one in a bag with a header card, 
and they believe it was called Sergeant Stone. Now, I cannot prove it. I cannot find any pictures of it, but I'm pretty sure when I was a kid, they had those at Montgomery Wards, and they were cheap. They were like $1.95. G.I. Joe's were, were three, 395 350 These guys were a little bit cheaper, maybe a little bit. Uh, and kids loved them and played with them. There's advertisements where they, they advertise G.I. Joe with his buddy, uh, Buddy Charlie. Let me find see if I can find that ad. Oh, I was wrong about the price of G.I. Joe. He was actually a direct competition. And in 1964 or 65, they were $1.97 each. And that's G.I. Joe. And there's his buddy, Buddy Charlie, the all-American fighter. It's the G.I. Joe Jeep. They show the G.I. Joe coming with all kinds of really cool accessories. The uh, That's a Buddy Charlie. And that's G.I. Joe. And, of course, G.I. Joe came with all these great outfits. You can still buy accessories, and you get a lot of that stuff today. And also, they did, about 10 years ago, they did a 40th anniversary timeless classic. They were beautiful figures and accessories. So anyway, folks, uh, just a little tip and some information on some of the 60s action figures from Marks and Hasbro Palatoy. Uh, there was another company that produced a 12-inch action figure called Tommy Gunn, and that was in England. Uh, and that was made by two different companies. Pedigree introduced it, and then Zodiac bought it uh, 10 years later. Uh, this was in the 60s and 70s and created one called uh, Tommy Gunn. And I had one of those, but I, I let it go a couple months ago. Anyway, I've kind of gotten more into finding these guys again and uh i hope you guys enjoy it if you get out and about and you're going to flea markets uh check out the old action figures and pick them up if you can get them cheap enough i'm getting offline here now you guys have a great day and uh, uh try to be nice to each other we'll talk at you later bye bye